Hey Bob. Hey PT. Ready to do it? Indeed. Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome to the epic, the sardonic, the titillating, best fit square! Hey folks, welcome back to Best Fit Square Show. I'm your host, Manuel Ortega. In this episode, we explore how polls have hijacked elections. Here to help us better understand is our very own in-house scholar, P.T. Hey, P.T. Hey, Mo. In our previous episode, P.T., you helped us better understand how politicians exploit burden of proof to fabricate law whose sole purpose is to disenfranchise African Americans. That's right, Mo. In this episode, we explore what a pollster has in common with a blacksmith. They both fabricate stuff with one important difference. What's that? One produces useful objects while the other produces absurd fictional realities. But blacksmiths are far and few between these days, whereas polls still thrive. You can say that again. Today, there are about 1,200 polling organizations. 1,200, huh? Who talks to them? Indeed. But that didn't stop pollsters from the late 1990s to 2012 from conducting 37,000 polls by making more than 3 billion phone calls. 3 billion phone calls? Of those contacted in the early years of polling, more than 90% responded. Of those contacted, but what percentage of those contacted represent the total eligible voting population? Well, roughly 200 million folks are eligible to vote. Of those 200 million, perhaps a couple thousand participate in polling. Jeez, what's that about? One-tenth of one percent? No doubt a minuscule portion of the electorate. So, what you're telling me is Fox News used an utterly absurd metric to decide who would participate in its first primetime debate and determine where candidates would stand on the debate stage. You mentioned phone calls. How'd that work? And what about the internet? Problems abound. When it comes to phone calls, the typical person with a landline is older and tends to lean more conservative. By contrast, the internet the typical person is younger and tends to lean more progressive. So, how does one get the right mix from such a diverse population? Hmm, not well, I'm afraid. Uh, for example, polls failed to predict Netanyahu's victory in March 2015. In May 2015, every major national poll failed to forecast the Conservative Party's win in the UK. So, not only are metrics sounded absurd, the whole process is one big fail. Correct. And there's an even more fundamental problem. Right. Pollsters rose to prominence by claiming that measuring public opinion is good for democracy. But what if it's not? In Demo, let's take a closer look at one example. Gallup. I know that one. George Gallup. His poll was based on his Applied Psychology PhD dissertation titled An Objective Method for Determining Reader Interest in the Content of a Newspaper. Gallup was the first to apply psychology to politics. Adherents considered the poll the greatest contribution to democracy since the introduction of the secret ballot. But this is 1930s America, not a pretty sight. The Great Depression, income inequality at a zenith, and the gap between those educated and those not was wider than the Grand Canyon. Who was being polled? Disproportionately white, educated males. While African Americans constituted about 10% of the total population, they represented less than 2% of those polled. Compounding this matter was the fact that blacks in the South were generally prevented from voting. So in those states, blacks were not polled by Gallup. So instead of functioning as a tool for democracy, polls compounded democracy's flaws. Gallup found himself in a quandary. Using polls to gauge opinion was one thing. To forecast election results was another matter. Gallup recognized his poll for the purpose of forecasting election results was far from perfect. Gallup also doubted polls served any great social purpose. Then why bother? Gallup conducted polls only to prove the accuracy of his surveys, there being no other way to demonstrate it. The polls themselves, he thought, were pointless. Okay, but today we have folks like Nate Silva applying the latest statistical methods and digital tools. While commendable, Silva makes his own predictions by aggregating polls, giving greater weight to those which are more reliable. The problem being, polls drive polls. Good polls drive polls, and bad polls drive polls. And when bad polls drive good polls, they're not so good anymore. Couple this to the fact that polls are not regulated. Not regulated? In the 1930s and 40s, motions were regularly introduced in Congress calling for an investigation into the influence of public opinion polling on the political process. To no avail. Social scientists joined the dissension in the 1940s, labeling polls as 
or fostered. So the tyranny of a disproportionately white, educated male demographic remains a major rhetorian monstrosity trampling the rights of minorities. Just saying. <laughs>